Dr. Lin's Limes. In 1535, the French navigator Jacques Cartier anchored his ships along the St. Lawrence River. He spent the winter near the site that would later become Montreal, Canada. During the long, bleak winter, more than a hundred men in his expedition came down with scurvy. The word scurvy means scaly skin. The disease causes its victims to lose weight and grow weak. Gums bleed and teeth loosen. Sores do not heal. Connective fibers that hold the body together weaken. Victims of scurvy die as if they are falling apart. Jacques Cartier's men did not die. The natives offered a homemade remedy. Drink a tea made of pine needles soaked in water. Despite the simple nature of the solution, the desperate sailors tried it. This tea brought them back to good health. Doctors paid little attention to the natives in their trial and error methods of curing disease. A hundred years passed, and scurvy remained the scourge of sailing ships. Sailors feared it like people on land feared smallpox. In the 1700s, more sailors on British ships died of scurvy than of all other diseases, naval battles, and shipwrecks combined. The British Empire depended on its ships for both commerce and national security. England is an island nation. The British took any threat to the smooth operation of the Royal Navy as a serious matter. The problem of scurvy came to the attention of Dr. James Lind, a Scottish physician. In 1747, he began treating patients in the Naval Hospital in Edinburgh. Dr. Lind began his medical career as a surgeon's mate in the British Royal Navy. He was both shocked by the number of scurvy cases and disturbed because no one could cure it. Dr. Lind read all about scurvy. It showed up not only on ships, but also in remote villages during long winters and on mountain climbing expeditions. During the age of sailing ships, sea voyages often lasted a year or more. These ships lacked a way to keep food from spoiling in its natural form. Instead, food was dried or preserved with salt. Fruits and vegetables were especially difficult to store and keep fresh. Sailors ate biscuits, hardtack, and salt pork. For ten years, Dr. Lynn struggled with the problem. His studies began to point toward the lack of certain fresh foods, especially fruits and vegetables, as the cause of scurvy. As an experiment, he selected twelve sailors who suffered from the disease. He divided the men into six pairs. Although he put them all on the same basic diet, he varied what they ate a little. To one pair he gave cider, to another spices, and so on. To one pair he gave two oranges and one lemon every day. At the end of a week, the two that ate oranges and lemons improved considerably. One returned to work, the other man stayed on and helped Dr. Lind with the experiment. Captain James Cook, one of England's greatest captains, learned of Dr. Lind's experiment. Captain Cook had made many voyages of discovery to the Pacific Ocean. He dreamed of a plan to explore the entire size and scope of the Pacific Ocean. It would take four years. To carry out the ambitious voyage would be a terrible burden to the crew. A large number of scurvy cases would almost certainly develop, Captain Cook explained to Dr. Lind. Can you offer any help to prevent scurvy? Yes, I can, Dr. Lind replied promptly. Like Captain Cook, Dr. Lind cared about the men. He proposed several changes cleaner living quarters, professional medical help aboard ships, and plenty of fresh drinking water. Stock a wide selection of food, Dr. Lynn told Captain Cook, especially citrus fruits, such as oranges, lemons, and limes. During the voyage, make landfall whenever possible to take on fresh food. Captain Cook's voyage became one of the greatest sagas of all time.
He sailed throughout the Southern Pacific. He outlined the size of Australia, sailed around New Zealand, and plunged south to the ice and cold inside the Antarctic Circle. It took four years. He came home a firm believer in Dr. Lynn's lines. Unfortunately, the British Admiralty, the men in charge of the Navy, did not take kindly to the suggestion that they had been feeding British seamen poorly. They prized themselves upon having the best fed and best equipped Navy in the world. They did put into practice Dr. Lynn's other suggestions, hospital ships, clean quarters, fresh drinking water, and ventilators to bring fresh air below decks. They balked at supplying oranges and limes. Ten years passed. Dr. Lynn's success as a doctor grew greater. He became physician to King George II. He continued to tell about his study of scurvy. Whenever captains of other vessels tried the citrus fruits, they too demanded fresh limes and oranges for their men. In 1795, the Admiralty finally gave in to progress. They reversed their stand. Now they ordered sailors to drink lime juice. Limes kept better than other citrus fruit. The success of the program can be judged by the fact that to this day, British sailors are called limeys. This simple remedy wiped scurvy from British ships. Neither Dr. Lind nor anyone else knew why citrus fruit saved lives. More than a century passed before doctors learned that scurvy is a dietary deficiency disease. It is caused by the lack of vitamin C in the diet. In those days, there was no refrigeration. The old-fashioned methods of preserving food, smoking, salting, and drying, destroyed vitamin C. But fresh limes contain vitamin C. So do pine needles, which explains why the native remedy cured Jacques Cartier's men. Although vitamin C is absolutely essential to good health, it need be present only in trace amounts. The total for the human body for an entire year comes to less than one ounce. Despite Dr. Lynn's victory over scurvy, most doctors of the 1800s refused to believe that a disease could be cured by simply eating the right food. In the 1870s, Louis Pasteur and Robert Koch proved the germ theory of disease. After that, it became even more difficult to convince doctors to look to the diet to cure some diseases.